Hello, my name is Scott Auerbach. That's pronounced your back, my back, our back. And I'm delighted to share our research on high octane computing, modeling the properties of nanoporous materials such as zeolites, thinking about clean energy applications and the self assembly of zeolites themselves. I call this high octane uh, computing because we do computational chemistry to try to understand zeolites, which are the most used catalysts on the planet Earth in their application to make high octane fuels today. And we're interested in how they might be able to be used to make clean energy, so biofuels, tomorrow. So I'd like to start with a quick introduction into the kind of research that I do. So I study inorganic structures. So here you see me at the beach looking at a inorganic structure. It's an inorganic structure because it's made out of sand. And sand has the composition of silicon dioxide, which is the same base composition as zeolite. But a chemist cannot live in inorganic structures alone. A chemist must also study organics. Here I'm looking at three different organic materials. The organic material with the goggles on is my son Nick, and he's now a senior in college, just like uh, many of you are about to graduate. My um, other organic material pointing to me is uh, my daughter Annie. She is a first year student in college, um, having started college in a, a pandemic. And the or organic uh, uh, material on my head is, of course, seaweed, which is made out of cellulose, which is the most abundant biopolymer on the planet Earth. And we're fascinated in thinking about ways to convert the energy in cellulose into biofuels. Now, I'm a physical chemist, which means that I am fascinated by structures of molecules in potential energy wells. So here I am in a potential energy well as a triatomic molecule. And the energy in the potential energy we calculate using wave mechanics. So here's the wave mechanics right there. Anyhow. That's a summary of the, uh, a very high level summary of the research that I do. Now I'd like to get a little bit more specific. And so this shows a picture of a zeolite. You can think of a zeolite as being a nanoporous inorganic crystal that is like a hotel for molecules. Now hotels for people, they have rooms and they have hallways. And the room can hold about four-ish people, except if you have a party and you wanna cram in a lot more people. Zeolites are exactly the same way. Zeolites have pores or cavities that hold molecules. Typically, they hold around three or four or five molecules. But if you really wanted to jam them in with a high pressure, you, you can do that. And these cavities are connected through channels. And there are many different kinds of structures. And we're fascinated by a variety of different questions. First of all, how do zeolites form? Now, we know nature abhors a vacuum. So these things are not going to form with cavities. There's going to be something filling the space of that cavity. And that's called a structure directing agent. And we'd like to know what its role is. So we do modeling and we collaborate with synthetic chemists to figure out how these things form. We also are fascinated by how they are used as catalysts, as what are called shape selective catalysts. Oftentimes what happens is that a molecule in a zeolite pore reforms to mirror the shape of the pore. And sometimes that happens, you make a useful biofuel, but sometimes when that happens, the molecule actually gets clogged in the pore and it poisons and destroys the catalyst. And there's a razor thin difference between a useful biofuel and a um, uh, pore clogging you know, molecule. So something that's really good, a biofuel or a byproduct. Um, and so we wanna study the pathways, the chemical pathways that separate those two. Finally, we want to use data science to try to understand and categorize the different structures. There's 240 known zeolites and there's millions of hypothetical zeolites. All of them are three-dimensional networks that are like hotels for molecules. And the question is, in some sense, are some of these blueprints similar to others? And comparing and coming up with a similarity metric for a three-dimensional network, it turns out to be a grand challenge in mathematics. So we're using data science to try to tackle that.
to come up with almost like a vocabulary for when different zeolites can be similar. And we're going to try to use that vocabulary to try to actually understand how they form. So thank you so much for coming to my talk. I hope you learned a lot. Let me know if you have any questions. Bye-bye.